Welcome back. Plenty of earnings to go over. So let's straight away dive in and look at uh, our CNBC TV 18 list of top stocks to watch. We have our entire team standing by, guys. Uh, good morning to all of you. Abhishek, let's start off with the Indusin Bank. Not quite a great quarter. Well, uh, it was a very weak quarter uh, for Indusin Bank, especially on the PNL front, and that was led by the stress that has built in into their number. So uh, the net interest margin is at 12 quarter low of 4.08 percent versus 4.25 percent in the previous quarter. Uh, asset quality is one of the worst that you are seeing in last nine quarters. Gross NP ratio of about 2.1 percent and net NP ratio of 0.64 percent. Operating profits have declined year on year for the first time in last 33 quarters or even more. And operating profit decline, both YOY and quarter and quarter, are the highest with reference to the rate of decline in uh, you know nine years or even more. So operating profits declined seven percent uh, YOY and about nine percent sequentially. Uh, quarterly slippages are at uh, nine quarter high. So formation of bad loans uh, that is called slippages is at uh, eighteen hundred crores. Annualized slippage ratio is also elevated uh, due to this. The bank has created a provision buffer this time around of about five hundred and twenty five crores, and there is no clarity on the same. Uh, risk weight asset to loans are at 118% nearly and uh, that means the risk in the balance sheet remains elevated and is the highest that you are seeing in last seven quarters. Profits have declined YOY uh, which is the highest in last 33 quarters and sequential decline in profits is the highest in last 18 quarters. This has led to weakening in the return ratios which is one of the weakest in last four years or 16 quarters ROA at 1% and ROA less than 10% at 8.1%. With reference to the PNL, both the uh, you know Anna and Pat is below our poll. Back to you. Okay, all right. Thanks a lot uh, for that, Abhishek. So those numbers go down as a weak set. But let's hop across to Mangalam for ITC's numbers. Mangalam, how are the numbers? Well, resilient performance coming in from ITC. So you know, as compared to the previous trading session, now uh, some of the FMCG stocks they've either fallen too much or maybe you know they've met expectations even as demand conditions are subdued. So for ITC, the re revenue was uh, beaten by strong performance in their agribusiness and also hotels on account of a high base. Uh, there was high inflation in leaf tobacco, FMCG inputs and paper business that weighed down on the margins but no problems with the top line. 19,300 crores the street was working with a number of 17,700 crores. The EBITDA slightly shy of expectations but the net profit uh, you know meets expectations at 5,080 crores versus expectations of 5,050 crores. What's good? Cigarette volumes grew at 3%. Uh, high end of the expected 2 to 3 percent range. FMCG revenue slightly subdued but tough demand conditions. We have hotels that did 12 percent but agribusiness that did a revenue growth of 47 percent led by value-added agri exports and leaf tobacco. So see some green on the stock especially as it ended at the low point of trade yesterday. All right uh, <clears throat> Mangalam thank you very much uh, for that. Well uh, NTPC is the next one we're going to focus on. Second quarter earnings Vivek, is ha Vivek has details. Vivek morning. Well, good morning. You know, across the power universe, you know, one trend that tremors is the fact that due to the higher monsoons, you have actually seen quite uh, subdued demand conditions settling in. And on the back of that, you know, across the universe, you're actually seeing lower PLF trends or plant uh, load factor trends. Now, talking about NTPC specifically, slightly subdued quarter. Why, why you've actually seen a degrowth as far as the top line is concerned. The adjusted PAT was in line, you know, largely supported by other income as well as uh, recognition of a deferred account balance. Now, along with that, what actually impacted the uh, earnings this time around, much higher financial finance costs and higher other expenses. This is something that, you know, the street will ask management in the conference call today. Talking about the numbers themselves, revenues down 1.3% on a year basis. It missed our poll. Uh, EBITDA 2 down almost 8.2% on a year basis. Again, a significant miss to our poll. And this is something that, you know, uh, th there will uh, be some clarity required from the management as well. Profitability, however, higher uh, by almost 20% on a year basis, aided by other income as well as the, you know, the balance that we discussed about. Now, talking about the gross generation highlights, you know, it is down to 2.1% on a year on year basis and the coal PLF came in at 72.28 versus 75.83 again a depot there expect some red on NTPC today okay all right Vivek thanks a lot uh, for that well let's go back to Mangla Mangla you're the, you're the man who's bringing some good news uh, this morning, uh, why the companies are covering, obviously. But tell us about Godrej Consumer. <laughs> Let's talk about Godrej Consumer here as well. You know, uh, the numbers aren't all that great. But remember, they had already given us a weak second quarter update. The demand conditions are soft. And the stock has already corrected 17%. So on account of those subdued expectations, these numbers actually look not particularly bad. Revenue at 36.50 crores. Again, expectations were 3,500 crores. EBITDA, 760 crores. Expectations were that of 730 crores. And the net profit also higher than subdued expectations. Domestic organic 
organic volume growth is 7% in the higher quartile of the industry itself. And what's good is that the international part of their business is actually now doing extremely well. So we have margins coming in at 16% as against 10% what they were about two years ago. Household insecticides, again, a sector which hadn't been doing well for them, is now growing in mid-single digits. What's not good is that the India EBIT is down 11% and India EBIT margins are down 500 basis points. To that, the company has said margin pressure is likely to remain for the next few quarters before it normalizes, though they consider it to be temporary. And there are headwinds of oil costs and tough consumer demand in India. Given the uh, you know above conditions, I see some green on the stock, largely because a lot of the weakness is priced in. Okay, all right. Uh, got that, Manglam. Thanks very much. Some good news from Godrej Consumer coming through. Let's go back to Vivek and find out uh, how the numbers are for JSW Energy. Vivek? Well, a very similar story, you know, lower power demand, you know, impacted JSW Energy uh, this time around. Uh, talking about the numbers themselves, you know, revenues are down 1% on a year-on-year basis, EBITDA down almost 10% on a year-on-year basis, uh, on the back of much higher fuel costs, up 21%. We're talking about net debt also inching higher, so uh, that is something that impacted uh, uh, the operational performance of the company. Margins at 52.6% versus 57.9%, and profitability largely flat on a year-on-year basis. Along with that, the company has pushed up forward you know the capacity addition guidance that they had for fi25 by a quarter or two now when you're talking about the average tariff you know given the fact that there was much lower power demand average tariff at 4.48 rupees per kilowatt hour you know which is down almost 24 percent on a year on year basis and what impacted the results this time around lower spreads as far as the merchant tariff sales was concerned and along with that the company actually saw the impact of a two-part tariff revision as far as the hydro power plant is concerned and on the back of that you did see a subdued quarter coming in for JSW Energy. Uh, remember, valuations too are quite high for this particular name. All right, uh, Vivek, thank you very much uh, for that. United Breweries, uh, back to Mangala. Mangala, morning. Morning. So I don't know whether it was you, Nigel, or others in the studio uh, that led to this because United <laughs> Breweries, premium <laughs> volumes grew by 27% and that's the highest that we've seen in the industry so far. So revenue, 2117 crores. Again, Street was expecting around 20, 000, uh, tw uh, 2070 crores. So a mild beat there. The EBITDA, 227 crores. Again, slightly above expectations and that's flown down to the bottom line as well. 132 crores of the net profit as against expectations of 128 crores. Total volume grew 5%. Here the Street was expecting 6 to 7% growth. But is the premium volume that really stands out. 27% uh, jump out there is what we've seen. And as a result of which, we've seen an improvement in gross margins quarter on quarter as well. What could have been better is that gross margins could have expanded year on year as well. And South could have done better too. But this time around, the growth was led by both North and West, which is, I wondered, whether it was you or Nigel. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right, Manglam, I'll take the blame for the prestige and above segment. That's more important, I think. So, <laughs> not not in beauties, obviously. In <laughs> but let's go back to Vivek. Vivek, tell us about GMR as well as IEX. Well, uh, good morning. You know, GMR Airports as well as IEX. Uh, GMR Airports, a largely steady operational performance, you know, aided by international as well as uh, uh, domestic passenger traffic uh, growing by almost 7% and 12% respectively. Uh, but what actually dented the bottom line was the fact that much higher finance costs this time around, net debt inched up higher both sequentially as well as on a year-on-year -year basis. So net debt at 28,700 crore, up 21% on a year-on-year -year basis. Talking about the uh, numbers themselves, revenues higher by close to 26%, uh, EBITDA up by 18.3%. Margins at 33.1 percent versus 35.2 percent, so contracting on a year on year basis. And the bottom line, you actually saw a loss coming in, so 429 crore loss versus a loss of 190 crore. Now, coming to IEX, you know, the company had given the volume updates, so this particular set of numbers largely in line with what the company has uh, given good set of numbers uh, uh, in line with expectations uh, but remember the overhang of market coupling remains on IEX. So revenues higher by 28 and a half percent, EBITDA up 30.5 percent on a year on year basis, margins too coming in quite strong you know uh, expanding by over 200 basis points, uh, profitability higher by 25.3 percent, Q2 volumes were up at 36.7 billion units, this is up almost 38 percent on a year on year basis, a uh, much higher availability of power led to quite a significant crash as far as the day ahead market prices, clearing prices was concerned. Mm, okay, all right. So at least uh, IEX is ending the red streak for Vivek, right? Otherwise, NTPC and GMR Airports, a couple of others, all have been quite subdued. Uh, let's head across now to Sonal to figure out how uh, MGL fared in the second quarter. Sonal, not looking too good? 
well yes on the margin front not looking so good but they surprised uh, positively on the volume front because that was higher than estimates if you look at the numbers revenues were down sequentially 7.7% uh, lower EBITDA was down 4.8% margins came in at 23.3% that compares with 26.3% lower than the poll as well and profits were flat on a quarter on quarter basis but volumes as I said higher than the estimates came in at 4.1 MMS CMD this compares with an estimate of 3.94 they are up 13% on a YY basis 6% on a sequential basis and this is the third quarter of more than 13% YOY growth in volumes and one of the highest volume number that the company has reported. However, gross margins, they came in it at a 7 quarter low leading to pressure on EBITDA per SCM as well and gross margins came in at 16.8 rupees per SCM. But the main commentary will be in the conference call today where they will talk about the impact of cut in APM gas allocation because that could hurt margins further. So going with red because the margin pressure continues because of higher gas costs. All right, uh, thanks very much, uh, Sonal, for that. Uh, that's uh, <clears throat> MGL. Well, Dixon is uh, the next one that we're going to focus on, and I think this kind of wraps it up on a high. Uh, Upasana is here with details. Upasana, morning. Good morning. So strong set of numbers from Dixon in its Q2 FI25. Revenue was above our poll estimates, while PAT and margin was largely in line. Now, strong EBITDA and revenue growth was mainly driven by the robust growth seen in companies' mobile and EMS segment. Now, coming to revenues first, they stood at 11,534 crore with an uptick of 1.3 times on a one-way basis. EBITDA stood at 426 with an uptick of 1.15 times. And EBITDA margin saw a dip of 30 basis points at 3.7%, as share of low margin mobile and EMS increased from 57 to 82% in the company's overall revenue mix. That explains the dip of 30% on the margins. Now, coming to adjusted PAT, it stood at 202 crore with an uptick of 79% on a one wire basis. Mind you, there's an exceptional item of 210 crores uh, in the company's financials this time, which explains the fair value gain of Dixon's stake of 6.5% in Aditya Infotech. So, all in all, strong set of numbers from the company. Okay, all right, got that. Thank you very much uh, for that, Opasna. We're going to watch out for Dixon along with, of course, all the others. Let's quickly recap our list of stocks to watch this morning. The one that have positive news flow around them are ITC, Godrish Consumer, United Breweries, IEX, and of course, Dixon Technologies. The ones that have uh, negative uh, earning sentiment around them would be Indusind Bank, NTPC, JSW Energy, GMR Airports, and Mahanagar Gas. All right, now let's uh, head across to figure out what's the latest in the commodity universe. Manisha is joining in with a quick heads up. Manisha, good morning and happy Friday. <laughs> to you too, Surbhi. <laughs> well, it really has been two, uh, two divisions in sense of the week here. The, the week started with all-time highs and multi-week highs for many of these metals and commodities. But the second half of this week has seen some profit-taking. So more or less, uh, you know, uh, can be called a week of consolidation in that sense, the way we are heading for a weekly strength here. I'll start with the crude oil prices, which are headed for a weekly gain. Last week was a 7% decline. This week is 2 to 3% on the higher side. Well, with Israel uh, constantly talking about uh, attacking Iran is keeping the markets jittery and is the reason you haven't been able to create a short in this week here. When it comes to metals, well, we are looking at a consolidation here. After hitting those multi-week and multi-year highs, it is nearly quarter to half a percent of a decline that the metals are headed for this weekly close. Same goes for the gold and silver prices also. While we are headed for a weekly gain, but the gold and silver prices, which hit all-time highs in the Indian markets and created record highs in the international markets as well, have come off slightly. And that is because the U.S. dollar index is holding above 104. This is a fourth weekly gain for dollar index. The treasuries are on the higher side as well. So it is a bit of a mood of profit-taking in the Asian markets for many of these commodities. All right. Uh, Namanisha, thank you very much uh, for that. Uh, so, <clears throat> gold in uh, focus one way or the other every day. We'll take a break. Atul Lal of Dixon Technologies joins in about their second quarter earnings beat. It's a big one and that's the one which is coming up next. Stay with us.